Hey guys, this is Cody Short with Skylink, and today we're gonna go over common solar inspection practices using a drone. So let's dive right in. The first thing we want to talk about is preparation. Success or failure of your inspection is gonna be with all your preparation before you even deploy out to the site. So the first part of that is ensuring you know your site. So having an accurate and full as-built. The as-built for this site is going to show all the site information. It's gonna provide you with orientation, layout, access, access roads, panel angles, so pretty much everything you need in order to plan a proper inspection for the solar site. This can typically be obtained by your site contact, direct contact with the customer, or whoever you're working with to uh, perform this inspection. The next thing we'll talk about is a gate code. A gate code is very important because if you don't have the right information to access the site, then you may be driving a long way to do no inspection and then you're just heading home without any data. So contact your point of contact and make sure they have some kind of gate code or site access information. If the site is active, a lot of the times the, the gates will be open or there'll be personnel on site to let you in. So just be familiar with your site and make sure you request that information. This leads us right into the next topic, which is your POC or your point of contact. Um, each site should have a point of contact, but not all sites do. Sometimes these sites are very remote. There's no technician or site manager. You're just using a gate code or you're calling an operations center for access. When the site does have a point of contact, they're your best source of information because they're often the site manager or the site tech, and they're gonna be able to give you the most updated access information, whether that's an updated gate code, which way to access the site. Some of these sites are very remote, so you need to access via certain roads and the status of the site if there's any issues with the site that you need to know about beforehand. So make sure you get your site contact information. Let's talk about safety. Safety is always paramount with any drone inspection. You always want to perform a proper risk assessment to identify the hazards at a certain site. And then you want to reevaluate that risk assessment when you arrive at site. So be sure to do your risk assessment and reevaluate that so that way you could mitigate all possible hazards. Speaking of hazards, you want to go to the site with all your proper PPE. Um, we suggest always having a hard hat, high-vis vest, and steel or composite toe boots at a minimum. Certain sites are gonna require maybe some specialized gear like snake chaps or you know sun protection, eye protection. Um, this really just depends on where the site is and what the customer requirement is. Types of panels. Uh, this is gonna be very important when it comes to flight planning. So the two common types of panels that you'll be inspecting out there are panels that are fixed, and then you have panels that are on trackers. So those are your two common types, and the way that you flight plan for these two different types of panels is going to vary. So first things first, let's talk about fixed panels. Maybe not as common with a lot of the newer, larger sites. Fixed panels are fixed in a certain direction at a certain degree, and they don't move at all. So when you're doing your flight planning, it's fairly simple. You already know the orientation of the panels, so you can set your flight plan up to execute right when you show up to the site. Now, if you're off a little bit on your flight plans, you can always make adjustments out in the field to get right right on with your, your flight plans to be in line with those panels, uh, depending on what orientation is required. The con to fixed panels is that you have less radiance throughout the day. Since that panel is fixed, in the morning when you have these steep angles, you're not gonna gain a radiance as early as if it was uh, rotating. So often you have to wait till a little later in the morning and you have to stop your inspection uh, a little bit earlier in the afternoon because you won't have the proper irradiance due to that angle. And this is the inverse when it comes to panels on trackers. So the panels on trackers, they're gonna start at a steep angle in the morning to get as much sunlight as they can, which means you're getting irradiance to that panel much quicker. And then that panel is going to track throughout the day um, all the way to the other side, usually east to west, and you'll be able to maximize your capture day the only con with this is that it requires much more diligence in your flight planning and making adjustments throughout the day. Irradiance meters. This has become a standard and very important for solar inspections. This is gonna measure basically the power going to that panel. And now there's a variety of handheld meters that you can quickly and accurately record irradiance. We use simple handheld meters and we measure in watts per meter squared. Our standard and the general industry standard is gonna be 600 watts per meter squared during your inspection. So you don't want to begin or continue an inspection with anything lower than that. Keep in mind in the winter months, 
it'll be harder to gain that irradiance and you're gonna have less of that irradiance window. So it's very important to track that irradiance throughout the day. We usually check it before the inspection, at each battery change, and at the end of the inspection. And this will uh, coincide with your, your data and your report at the end of your inspection. Solar lingo. Be aware of, of common terms on a, on a solar site, whether it's large or small, it's good to understand the very basics. So some of these terms may be inverter, combiner boxes, strings, and there's a, a variety of other terms you know, used by techs and site managers and different folks operating on a solar site. So if you understand and get a common idea, just by simply Googling these terms, you can better communicate with your site contacts and your customers, navigate the site, or to describe where an anomaly is. It's just best to talk the talk when you're out in the site. Understand your data. And in this case, we're talking about a solar inspection. So your data is gonna be RGB imagery and IR imagery. For a solar inspection, you're taking both IR and RGB imagery. And with modern sensors and drones, uh, typically this imagery is taken at the same time. So a dual sensor. The RGB imagery is gonna show you the general status of the site. While the IR imagery is gonna show you your anomalies, temperature fluctuations, all the very important stuff you're looking for in the report. However, RGB images can also indicate some of these anomalies, especially when it comes to missing panels or cracked panels, or even soiling vegetation. Um, those can be identified through RGB imagery or confirmed through RGB imagery. Let's talk about data processing. This is gonna be very important. So having the raw data is great, but knowing what to do with that raw data if you're processing it is also important. Depending on the way you process the data, it's going to directly affect how you capture that data. Um, certain processors require certain orientations and capture methodologies. So figure out what your end goal deliverable is for that solar inspection so you can figure out the most efficient and effective way to capture that site. So it doesn't help if you're capturing a whole site with the wrong orientation and you can't process that data. That's something you can figure out ahead of time based on which data processor you're using or if you're doing it in-house what your standard is. So I think it's best for everyone to kind of familiarize themselves with the large data processing standards in the industry to figure out what the common practices for inspections are. And we actually have another video that goes through setting up flight plans with the M3T, you know, it goes through as built all the way from the beginning to the end. So you can find more detail in that video on our YouTube channel. Weather is very important. When it comes to a solar inspection, you wanna capture with a peak, sunny day because clouds and rain can be very detrimental to the data quality. Our recommendation is to have that sunny day where you're maximizing your radiance because when cloud coverage comes over, your panels are not as heated and you're not finding the anomalies that you need to be finding and providing an accurate report. Our standard when it comes to, to weather is to always pause when clouds move over the site and wait until the sun is back up and the panels are heated to continue. Flight planning. We've alluded to this earlier in the video, but this is often going to be dictated based on how you're processing that data. That aside, it's important that you flight plan before heading out to the site as much as you can, because you should have all these tools to help you be successful, which includes the ASBUILT, and that should show you the entire site, where it's located, orientation of panels, what type of panels they are, and are they fixed or are they tracking. With that information, you can create very effective flight plans and have a majority of your work Work done before you get to the site. That way when you arrive, when you arrive, you're just mostly making small adjustments and you're executing. You're more worried about data quality than you are about capturing the full site or if you missed anything. Be sure to do your homework. Make sure you have the necessary materials and information to do effective flight planning before you get out to the site. That being said, I understand not all sites have great satellite imagery. So the only thing you may be working on is often an as-built. So you're creating rough flight planning plans with that as built and then you're really narrowing it down in when you get to the site and there's different methods to do that the best way is to get out there and understand what your situation is and take the best action to finish out your flight plans. The last thing we're gonna talk about is having the right tool for the right job. In this case, the right tool is actually a drone. There's quite a few drones now out in the market. So understanding what your requirements are from your customer is gonna help you pick out that right drone. There's plenty to research. We often use DJI products in-house, but that's not always the case. So familiarize yourself with your options and the price point of those options, their capabilities. Um, some of the drones we're familiar with, 
such as the M3T, the M350, the M300, the M210. Those Matrice series drones, they use sensors that you can attach or detach, such as the H20T, the X-T2, the H30T, and you also have the new Matrice 4T. All of these sensors that I just mentioned are 640 by 512, which is the industry standard when it comes to solar inspections. That's the minimal resolution you want to use for your thermography inspection. By following these practices, you're going to be able to conduct a safe, efficient, and accurate solar inspection utilizing your aircraft. Be sure to follow us, like, and comment below if you have any questions. We're always looking to collaborate with more industry partners and pilots, and you can also go on our website create a pilot account and you can reach out to us that way. So fly high guys and stay safe.